Hey y'all, today we're gonna talk about systems of linear equations. So all that is, is two or more linear equations and they have the same variable. And in our case, it's generally they both have an X and a Y. However many variables you have, that's how many equations you have to have in the system. So if we have two variables, we would need two equations to be able to solve the system. If we had three variables like X, Y, Z, we would need three equations to solve the linear system. Just for example. All right, if a system is going to have a solution, it'll be an ordered pair. And when you plug that ordered pair into both equations, it makes a true statement. So remember the ordered pair is an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. You plug in the X for X, you plug in the Y for Y. And when you simplify, you'll get a true statement. That means whatever's on the left side of that equal sign indeed equals what's on the right side of that equal sign, okay? So, let's look at what can happen when you graph a linear system. So, when you graph a couple equations, one option is that they'll overlap in one spot, and that one spot will be the one solution. For the, so, for this example, they intersect right here, so the solution would be over 0, up 3. Okay? So, if they intersect in one spot, there's one solution, and that solution is wherever they cross at. Now, if the lines are parallel, then there isn't a solution because we're looking for a point that they have in common. If the lines are parallel, well, by definition, parallel lines never intersect. So they can't possibly have a solution because they don't share any points. So if they're parallel, no solution. Get that in your brain. Parallel lines, linear system, no solutions. Okay. Now, if you graph the two lines and it just so happens they're on top of each other, well, if the two lines are the same line, how many points do they share? They share every single point, right? They share all the points. So that means there will be infinitely many solutions. I am S infinitely many solutions. Okay, so how do we graph a linear system? Well, it's just like graphing a linear equation, you just do it more than once, right? So the first thing you have to do is put both the equations in slope-intercept form. And in case you forgot, that's y equals mx plus b. And then you're gonna graph both the equations on the same coordinate plane. So. To graph, remember you use the slope and y-intercept. You put a point on the y-intercept first and then do rise over run to graph another point. Use a ruler though, because we're looking for where they intersect and it could be way later. All right, estimate where you think they intersect. Say, well, it looks like the point five, seven. So what you wanna do after you estimate is plug that point in and make sure you are correct. I highly suggest downloading the Desmos app if you have not done so already because you can graph equations on Desmos without putting them in slope-intercept form and then look at the graph and see where they intersect. It's a free app. It's fabulous. Let's do some examples. All right, let's look at the first one like you might see. It says, write the system shown and what is the solution? So first let's write the system, even though the solution part's the easy part. So we're thinking y equals mx plus b. And let's look at this line first. So the y-intercept is six. And I can see that the slope is negative. I could put a point here, and actually I can put a point here. So we go down one and run one. So the slope would be negative one. So this equation is y equals negative x, we don't generally write that one, plus six. Now that's for this line. Let's look at the other line. It has a y-intercept of 10. So if we do y equals mx plus b for the other line, it has a y-intercept of 10. Now it's going uphill, so my slope is positive. And again, we can just put a point right here. We rise one, we run one, so the slope is one. So that's y equals x plus 10. So our linear system is y equals negative x plus six and y equals x plus 10. Now, what is the solution to this linear system? That's where they're crossing each other. That's happening right here. 
All right, remember, x coordinate first. So I, that lines up down here with negative two. Y coordinate is eight. And I wanna show you what I mean by when you plug it in, it works. So look, if we plug in eight for Y, two for X or negative two, so that negative's already there. So that's negative, and then you plug in negative two plus six. That'll become a positive, and you get eight equals two plus six is eight. Yes, that is indeed a true statement. Now let's try it in the other one. For Y, I plug in an eight. For X, I plug in negative two. And then plus 10. What is negative two plus 10? It is eight. That is indeed a true statement. So you see how when you plug in the solution, it makes both of these true statements. Okay, let's do another one. All right, for this one, it says the system is graphed below. What is the solution? Well, I'm looking, I only see one line, so that might, means the lines must be on top of each other. But just to show that they're the same line, we could get this equation in slope-intercept form. So we got 2y minus 4x equals 6. So I'm going to kick the x out to the other side. When it goes to the other side, it will become a positive because to undo subtraction, you add. If it's beside, you divide, or to do undo multiplication, we divide. And we get y equals 2x plus 3. So look, they're the same line. This one was just being all secretive in a different form, right? So what is the solution to a system when it's the same line? There are infinitely many solutions because they share every single point. They're right on top of each other. Okay. Let's look at another one. I like these. It says, consider the given system, and they give us a system, use the graph to approximate its solution. So, we know the solution is where they cross right here, but it's not crossing in a pretty place. So, take a closer look. So, when I look for the x value right here, right here, I can see that the x part of my coordinate is going to be a negative because in quadrant two, x is negative and y is positive. So first, I'm gonna look for an answer in the format, a negative and then a positive. So, nope, yeah, yeah, nope. I'm down to two options. Now, my x coordinate is falling in between negative three and negative four. So let's just change these to decimals. Negative five over two, in case you don't know how to change a fraction to a decimal, all you have to do is take the top number and divide it by the bottom, and that's negative 2.5. And for negative 13 over four, that would be negative 3.25. So again, it has to be between negative three and negative four. So which one of these numbers is in between negative three and negative four? Ching, ching, ching. The answer is C. Not even doing any more math. Easy. All right, let's look at another one. For this one, they gave them to us in slope intercept form. They want me to graph them and solve it. No problem. So let's look at the first one. The y-intercept is three. So I'm gonna go up to three, uno, dos, trace, and put a point. The slope is negative three. So I'm gonna go down three and over one. I actually like to graph several points for these since I'm looking for the intersect. So I'm gonna do it again. Down three, over one. Down three, over one. Down three, over one. All right. Oh, that's pretty nice, huh? Feeling good about that line. All right, let's do the other one. The y-intercept is negative four. So I'm gonna go down to negative four. One, two, three, four, and put a point. And then the slope is one half. Whoops. So I'm going to rise one and run two. So from the y-intercept, I right And look, I can stop right now. I already see where they intersect. They intersect right here. So what is this point? This point is one, two is my x-coordinate. One, two, 
three down, so negative three is my y coordinate. So the solution is two, negative three. One more. This one says, which graph represents the solution to the system? Okay, so first, let's get these in slope intercept form. So for this one, we got x minus 2y equals 5. We're kicking out the x, so we get negative 2y equals negative x because we moved it to the other side. If it's beside, you divide. All right, so that'll cancel. We got y equals the negatives cancel. Now, what number's in front of that x even though I don't see it? A 1. And then a positive and a negative is a negative. All right, if you want to change that to decimals because you're more comfortable with that, that's cool with me. That'd be y equals 0.5x minus 2.5. Now let's look at the other one. Woohoo! Sorry. We got 3x plus 15y equals negative 6. Kick this one out. Get out of here. So now it's negative because it went to the other side to undo a positive we subtract. Don't forget you minus six here. If it's beside, you divide. And we gotta simplify these bad mamma jammas. So you got a negative and a positive is a negative. Three and 15, you can devote, both divide by three, and that'll give you negative one-fifth x minus. And then six and 15, you can both divide by three, and that will be two-fifths. Again, if you prefer decimals, that'd be negative 0.2x minus 0.4. All right, so I wanna narrow my choices down here. They both have a negative y-intercept. So both of my lines will be crossing through the bottom half of the x-axis. So when I look up here, maybe, Maybe this one's a definite no because you see how this is a positive x inter um, y intercept. Same thing here, they both have positive y intercepts. So now we've narrowed our options down to two. We could try to look at the slope of a half, it's kind of tough to do. I think at this point, I'm going to find the point where they intersect and plug it in to see which one works. So I'm going to take a mad stab and try this one. So this is the point one, two, three to the right, and then down one. So if this is right, then this point is gonna work in both of these equations. So let's try it in the first one. So for X, I'm gonna plug in three. For Y, I'm gonna plug in negative one. And let's see if that does indeed equal five. So the negative negative will become a positive. And three plus two, five does equal five. Never just base it off one. Always make sure it works in both, okay? So let's try it in this one. So we have three for my X, I plug in a three. And then plus 15 for Y, I plug in a negative one. And that needs to equal negative six. Three times three is nine. 15 times negative one is negative 15. And 9 minus 15 is negative 6. So look, this point worked in both of my equations, so graph B has to be the right answer choice. And guess what? If I plugged it in and it did not work in both of my equations, then the answer had to be A because those two had an incorrect y-intercept. So always use multiple choice to your advantage. All right, put that back up here. I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day.